Hi, guys. I'm Rochelle Boo Keeling from King of the Nerds, and you're listening to Jesse Elaine on Bring Me Your Torch. Welcome to another episode of Bring Me Your Torch. I'm Jesse. And I'm Elaine. And uh, before we get into things, we're just going to remind you one more time go to our website at www.bringmeyourtorch.com. And where else can you go while you're there? Facebook.com slash bring me your torch or twitter.com slash bring me your torque without the H. No H. And remember, you can follow us on Stitcher, on iTunes, on YouTube, all stuff. We put that at the beginning because I think sometimes people just go, oh, it's the ending, time to cut it off. We want to reinforce, like us. Well, or we're just, rate us. Or we're just uneducated and we don't know how to spell torch, as one couple from 90 Day Fiance called us uneducated. But Hey. Uh, yes. Speaking of 90 Day Fiance, let's get into that. Well, first, first of all, the good news. <laughs> uh, Starcasm, I want to give them a shout out for thanking us and giving us a shout out, talking about our last 90 Day Fiance episode, even though there were some people online who said, oh, it's boring. Oh, it's not worth it. Blah, a blah, snooze blah. fest is what they said it was. Hey, all I know is if it's good enough for Starcasm, I'm a happy boy. You know? <laughs> we made it. We're, we're famous. We're going to make it after all. And now on the less good news, maybe even bad news <laughs> side of things, there was one couple who I'm not going to name, who online after our last 90 Day Fiance episode, yeah, kind of got a little mad with us. We got a little pissed off. They're angry that we're talking about them. And to quote them on Facebook, they said, what a total snoozer. <laughs> they could at least focus their attention on a relevant show with real celebrities. Once they figure that out, perhaps they can reach more than three listeners. If you still talk to them, he's talking to uh, Jason Hitch from the show, by the way. If you're still talking to them, let them know that people quit caring about these couples other than Danny and Amy once the show ended. Hashtag peace. I don't know. I think they're old enough not to be doing hashtag peace. Whatever. BTW, colon. <laughs> <laughs> not sure who's giving them the quote unquote facts to work with. But they are highly misinformed and sound ridiculous spreading irrelevant information about regular people. They need to get real jobs. McDonald's is always looking for uneducated fools like themselves. <laughs> now, I got, I got a few things here. One, if people quit caring about the couples, why would Starcasm keep having articles about it? And why would those episodes be our biggest episodes? Yeah, and why are major magazines and tabloids covering people like Ganny and Amy when she you know, gave birth. So I'm, I'm a little bit, actually, did she give birth yet? Not yet. Right. She did. She, no, she did. She did. She, yeah. Well, they've been covering it from the very start from when she got pregnant and made her announcement. So if we're in 90 day fiance is so irrelevant again, TLC and major network television, um, they actually put it out there and then magazines and tabloids follow you guys. So come on the name, yeah. which we shall not speak. Buck up, dude, buck up. And going back to leaving regular people alone, now here's a here's a fact. Regular people. This is a fact. Regular people. Don't go on do reality, go on reality television TV. shows. Thank Those you. We've all watched enough reality TV to know that the people on reality TV just aren't normal. They're you know they're a little kooky. I mean we're friendly with some of them, and no disrespect meant to you, but you know it takes a special kind of person to be on a reality show. And if you go on a reality show. You should be prepared for people to talk about you because you're going to be on TV. You're now part of entertainment, right? Am I, am I crazy there? No, you're not. You're totally rational, rational way to think. And third thing, did they just offend everybody who works at McDonald's? I mean, wrong, at McDonald's, yeah. it's, it's an honest day's work. I mean, I, we're stretching here, but what the hell, you know, I'm going to give it back to them. It's an honest day's work. You know, I call them uneducated fools. You know, they're, they're getting up in the morning, going to work, doing whatever they do. You know, yeah, but can very... you honestly say you would never work for McDonald's Corporation? No. What if you did government relations for them? Or what if you were one of the managers at one of the biggest McDonald's in the world? You'd be getting paid very nicely. You know, what if I was down on my luck and I needed a job and McDonald's was all that was around? There's no shame in doing that to provide for your family. So, you know, I think it's not cool they said that. Um you know, you can joke about it with your friends, maybe, but not on not online where we can see it. And here's the last most important part to me. If they didn't want us talking about them, all they had to do was ask. You know, we're we're not monsters. We're not jerks. If you think we're being inappropriate and that you want us to shut up. I mean, by the way, this is the only person who's ever said stop talking about them. We will stop talking about them. So, you know, go back to your regular life. And go back to obscurity, and we'll leave you alone. It's all fine. Right, all right, we're we're giving them too much time at this. Enough point. of that. 
But then the last thing with 90 Day Fiance is yesterday we were perusing uh, Facebook and we see Danielle post something about going to London for 24 days. And I was like, what the hell? I mean, she's like your best friend. Do you get any info on this or what's going on? I actually haven't talked to her. And I know I said we were going to come out with something. <laughs> but over three weeks in London when she couldn't even afford to come and see us in D.C., I'm a little bit skeptical about this. I think a certain someone might give us another hashtag fail on that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, you know, again, we're friendly with them, but there was that whole fake pregnancy thing. This could be just another one of those things. You know, you know. I my guess is that she won't actually make it to London. Do you know how much a flight to London is? It's anywhere between like twelve and seventeen hundred dollars. Maybe the plane will get a flat tire; it can't take off. Maybe Muhammad will be on it, and he'll he'll give it a flat tire. I don't know. I'm. I'm He's, I'm not he's saying they're coming back. Actually, you know what it might be. What? What? This is actually a very good theory about what it might be. He might, might be. He might be getting the boot from the U.S. No. Why would Danielle go with him? Well, then? why would she have to go to all the way to London? Wouldn't she just go to Canada? Well, wouldn't she just say screw it and I'm staying in America? You good goodbye and good luck. Yeah, but where's he from? Is he from Morocco? He's from Tunisia. Tunisia. They might have a sort of reciprocal agreement with the UK where he can go to to the UK and kind of just stay there for however long. But I think I, we're overthinking I, this whole thing. My guess is that he might be getting the boot pretty soon. My guess is they're not really going anywhere. It's just something to put online. <laughs> <laughs> just like they were coming to DC for our goodbye party. I love it. Well, we'll stay tuned and I'll probably have something when she's actually going to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, switching on to shows that are actually on TV right now, Big <laughs> Brother, and these last few weeks in the house, there's been a power shift, and I have loved it. It's been – I was not happy with the season so far because I thought it was going to be a repeat of last season where people just get picked off one by one and no one breaks up the alliance. But that's the exact opposite of what happened these last few weeks. The uh, alliance, the Sixth Sense alliance, is kaput. They got railroaded. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> First you had James. And then you had Becky, back-to-back -back wins. And you know what, Becky, I, I'm impressed with Becky. Again, not only did she get a train to the face literally and bounce back, <laughs> she's kicking butt. And uh, you know, so she won the HOH. And that competition, I always think, they have basically a version of that every single season. Yeah. And I always think it's the worst. I would basically be Austin just falling down. I think I'd like break my tailbone from falling down so much. I would, I would, be a, I would never win it. It's good for like skinny athletic girls who can just kind of glide across. But not yeah, for if anybody big dudes, hasn't, yeah. If anybody hasn't seen it, it's basically like a soapy platform, and you got to glide back and forth carrying water, and then get this little ping pong ball at the top. And not only did she get the not the H O H thing, she got the five thousand dollars. She got the no more slop pass or no more have not pass. I mean, she just destroyed everybody else. Yeah, but why wouldn't you get all three if you really? Because if it's really if it's really close, comes down to the wire. It definitely was. You may not have time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's over once you get the HOA. So if it's really close, you go right for the HOA and you say forget the other stuff. But she had so much time. She said, "Screw it, I'm going to have it all." <laughs> so she nominated Shelly and Steve. And before we get into the nominations, why does Steve? You said you love Steve. Why does Steve hate Becky so much? I haven't been able to figure it out. Well, I don't know because we never see Steve. He's been really quiet lately. He's so irrelevant. <laughs> This last episode, he's just sitting there mumbling to himself and talking to the wall. But I but love how Becky called him out and said he needed to start playing the game and making alliances. He got so mad. He's like, thanks for calling me out. Well, that's what happens. Now you're you, my you know, next target. Well, don't you remember a couple of weeks ago, he was so happy that she lost and he was like flipping out. Like, it's one thing to say, you know what? We haven't made a connection in the house, so I'm worried I'm going to be her target. But he like takes this weird glee. And there's actually been rumors I've been reading online that he is like obsessed with Johnny Mac. Because he and Johnny Mac kind of have a, an alliance thing going. And Johnny Mac and Becky are very, very close, though most of the house just doesn't know it. And that he wants to get rid of Becky so he can have Johnny Mac all to himself. Who who wants to have Johnny Mac all to himself? Steve. Because everyone yeah. – so who thinks he's gay? No, it doesn't have to be with gay. He just wants them all – as his number one alliance. Yeah, I mean I can see that. That's a good point. But I think Johnny Mac is – he's not a floater, obviously, but he – I don't know what he like, is. Yeah, he <laughs> plays like every side of the house. But I think you have right now, as weird as it sounds, you have Becky, Johnny Mac, uh, and Steve, and – Shelly kind of in an alliance now. Then you have the other side of the house, and you have a few people still up from the Sixth Sense still floating. It's, you know, these things change by the minute. So you never What's know. going on with Austin and the twins? 
I still, I don't even, I, I think he's like a stalker, basically. Should we tell what, I mean, I've already read and I already know who's gone up. Should we, do you want to talk about yeah. that? Yeah. Well, the, you know, the veto happened and you know, the whole plan was to backdoor Vanessa and Steve won the veto, which you'll see on, must be tomorrow night. Yeah. And, and of course, Vanessa is going up and the whole plan was looking just to come together great and that Vanessa was going to go home, but there's been stuff happening in the last 24 hours or so. And what? it really could go either. It really could go either Are way. Are you now. kidding? Yeah, I think Becky still wants Vanessa out, but the, uh, the James and the, uh, Who's, who the hell's the other person there? Megs of the world. Meg, Meg yeah. I couldn't think. They all the James and the Megs of the world. Still? Yeah, I think I think James is really afraid because he got rid of Clay that Shelly's gonna come back after him. So it's gonna be kind of up in the air, I think, unless something happens in the next you know day or so. That's a good point. They were really gun ho to get Shelly out, and then it's all of a sudden Vanessa. But really, Vanessa. Well, I don't know. I don't think Shelly will be very much without. You know, without Clay, she'll pretty much be at the whim of everyone. But yeah, I would if I were James, I'd be so gunning for Shelly big time. And they're all wise to Vanessa now, so it's not like she's gonna pull. You know, when when she started crying in the last episode, Johnny Max like she's always crying. Here it comes again. So you know, their their spot has been blown. So I think everybody is back. The weirdest thing is the twins have been just going underneath the radar. Like they keep saying they're the last two couples, you know, so to speak, in the house. Yeah, you gotta break them up. You gotta break them up. Wait, who are the last two couples, though? No, the last, I mean, the two people in a couple are the twins. No, because yeah. say you take Julia out, and then you have Austin and um, Liz. I mean, oh, so it's, Liz would yeah. Liz would cut Austin in a second if need be, but you're never going to cut your sister. Mm, I, don't I don't know. We saw it on that. we saw it on Blood versus Water and Survivor. This maybe they will. Who knows? So you know, this week is also the double eviction. Yeah, who do you think will be the second person out? It's going to depend. I mean, it really, shall, well, yeah, it depends on it. Because those those double evictions happen so quickly, people don't have time to think about who they're going to nominate. You know, anybody can win. It's probably going to be one of those, those uh, you know, answering questions. And it yeah, comes down to well, people. it's going to be whoever Whoever's production wants to keep because they'll tailor the HOH to that, you know, to whoever's strengths they want to keep in the house. Well, there's talking about production in the diary room trying to get people to keep uh, – Vanessa, because you know Shelley's storyline is, you know, over so to speak, because she, uh, her, her man, her boy toy is gone. Yeah, I don't. I think she's still pretty weak. But if I were James, I'd have, I'd be watching my back. And Meg, how fake is Meg? She's sitting there like watching Shelley cry and holding her, and then she's just rolling her eyes. Meg, I like Meg, but she is the ultimate floater this season. Like. She's just bad at every competition, and she's really not doing much, is she? Yeah, but she was so likable until she started being really fake to Shelly and trying to bang Clay. I just we saw a completely <laughs> different side of her. Well, you know, maybe you get a few drinks in her, and she's she's a party. Well, obviously, I still like her. I think she's my favorite a girl, looking wise. <laughs> But you've not, I've never seen anyone her. that vindictive in the diary room. She's like, oh, come on, as Shelly's, like, crying on her shoulder. Well, I don't know. Uh, Liz was pretty mean to Jason on his way out for no real reason, I thought. Oh, yeah. She was so mean. Oh, it's, that's the nature of the game. So I really wish it was Wednesday and Thursday right now. I don't want to wait another day to see what happens here. But as always, we're going to keep watching, come back, and talk about what happens after the double eviction. I'm excited. <laughs> So next we're moving on to Bachelor in Paradise, and I'm telling you, I like the first couple episodes more than I like these second couple. But I think it's mostly because I don't remember the names of anybody on the show other than Ashley I. Ashley I. Jer and, and Dreamy Jared. I'm actually getting really bored with this season already. Yeah. I've kind of now, tuned out. Yeah. So we can go through it quickly then that uh, Ashley I sister Lauren left and you know I was I must have been tuning out too because I had to read a little bit about it to realize that apparently – Lauren has a boyfriend, but her boyfriend has a different girlfriend. <laughs> so the weird. Person, the only person she was looking forward to meeting was Joshua, and he didn't want her, so she said, you know, peace out and bail. It's like, when life gives you lemons, just say F the lemons and bail. That's basically what she did. Yeah, I. but Chris also made a really – did you watch the after? I, I, I haven't been watching the after show. How, how have that been? I never really knew that they did those after shows, but Chris – Harrison even made a comment, and he's like, well, that's why we always cast people who are actually on the seasons of The Bachelor and The yeah. Bachelorette, because people come in from the outside, and they just can't handle it. 
What does Chris Harrison do all day, by the way? Is he in that show for, what, three minutes at the end? I don't know, but he gets to go on sweet vacations. I know. He basically introduces the new person coming in, then goes and has another drink and a coconut, and then comes back at the end. I mean, that's a pretty sweet, sweet deal. I wish I had that. <laughs> Love it. So Jared was causing a big mess on this show. Do you think he's a ladies' man or is he a villain? Because you know, first he went out with Ashley I, even though he kind of didn't want to. And then he asked Claire on a date, which made Ashley I flip her lid. I mean, is, is he as handsome as they all make him out to People be? People really make him out to be somebody who's like a really good guy. I don't think he's particularly good looking. He kind of just looks like a dude with a little, he kinda, with a mousy face. He's, he looks okay, but I don't look at him and go, oh my god, he's a handsome man. I don't know. I really don't know. It could go either way. If I saw him in person, it would really depend on his personality. Um, I thought yeah. the one dude that came in that was the lawyer, I thought he was pretty good looking. Was that was that Joshua? Which one's I, I don't see, I don't know who's who. I'm so bad. I'm, I I have their names down, but I forget which one is actually. Well, the, the, the only guy that came in and was I guess he was a lawyer or something. Was he a lawyer? I don't He's know. He's the I don't last guy that came in, and he was. I don't know. That Mike? Mike G? Yeah, he came in and he was asked. You're the one who's like, I like Tenley, but she's an Elevenly, even though her name is Tenley or. Yeah, something that like that. The guy that came in last that was for Tenley. I don't, you know. He was the only one there that had any, like, actual. You know, he was only. He's reputable. He had a good education. He had a good. He's a good and he's job. On the bachelor. Yeah, and he's on the up and up. The other one's not so much. Yeah, because you had Joe, and Joe was like the real villain. He went out with Julia, and she seemed really like smitten with him. Like, oh, she's like, oh, we had such a good date and stuff. And he really didn't. I think he actually said, I could give zero Fs right now. I just want to yeah. just give me the damn rose type thing. What is he going just wants to wait around for on with that what, dude? What? He's so crazy. He just wants to wait for someone better to come along. He's just going to string this poor girl along. Though, I have to mention... I don't necessarily feel bad when something bad happens to someone who spells their name J-U-E-L-I-A. That's not how you spell Julia. What's that extra E doing in there? Oh, God, really? You really don't I like don't her because of that? I don't know. I mean, if she wanted to date me, I'd probably be like, oh, it's fine. It's a wonderful name. But I don't know. It just bugs me. <laughs> Why do you spell it so weird? <laughs> and then at the end of the episode, Claire just went bonkers, lost her mind, and <laughs> stormed out of there because she realized nobody wants her. You know, poor Jared. I, I, I don't know why. She seems perfectly fine, but no one liked her. No one was going to pick her, and she just took off, and it was to be continued. Well, remember when Joe came in, and he pretty much was like, this is your second rodeo. How many times have you been on these shows? <laughs> yeah, she got up. She was so pissed off when he did I'd that. I'd be so mad. Well, to be fair, though, how many times do you come on this show where it's like, oh, I've tried to find love like 25 times and I just can't stick? So you want to talk about some celebrity news. What do you, what do you got there? So have you been following Ben Affleck and Jennifer Gardner's divorce? Um, a little bit, but not, not as much as you have, apparently. What's going on? <laughs> there, it's just so juicy. You cannot write this stuff. So I, I think they divorce or they filed for divorce earlier this summer yeah, last I looked, things were going like well. Like, you know, they weren't fighting or anything. Well, reports are out that he has been cheating with the nanny, and we all we've heard about this. We've seen it everywhere. Um, the nanny of their, and I think she'd only been the nanny for a couple months. Uh, Why do you hire a hot nanny? I don't Seriously. know. I don't. It's just you should. Do yeah, that. You get like Nanny McPhee or something, or Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah, Mrs. Doubtfire. Like, sleep. like a transvestite nanny, you know. Something, just someone that your man's not going to go after. This chick. Because men are scumbags. This chick's admit that. hot. Um, so that, I mean, so that's one thing. Rumors are that she hired the paparazzi to come take a photo of them in the middle of the night when oh, they were meeting. Geez. And she was driving his car. I don't know if this is true. But another photo surfaced of her today, I think. I think it was either today or yesterday. Of her in a private jet with Tom Brady's four... Uh, Super Bowl rings on. So is this being with Ben Affleck, or is she separately away from him with Tom Brady? No, this photo I believe was taken, uh, a, like you know, a couple weeks ago, or actually like last month when she was on her way back with Ben Affleck, and they stopped in Las Vegas on the way back from a family vacation with Jennifer Gardner and Ben Affleck. Um, this mm. is when she was still employed by them. You know, that's what when you I think it was getting a hot, yeah, because I don't getting a hot nanny. I, I I can't say it enough times. Never get a hot nanny. Well, look at her in that. Have you seen the photo? I think I saw a picture of her quickly. 
Look at the photo. Just look at the photo. It's great. She looks oh, super relaxed on this private jet with her like you know shoes off, socks up on the feet up on the little seat. Four Super Bowl rings. I mean, it's scandalous. And what's Tom Brady letting it, letting it happen? You know, I mean, I'm no Patriot fan. I'm no Tom Brady fan. But you can't let your your buddy's mistress wear your wedding rings and take a picture of it. Buddy's mistress. I love it. But they were already they already filed for divorce, I believe. But still, I mean, say nothing happened until they filed for divorce. It still looks bad. And people are going to think the worst. Well, what do you think? What's her name? Giselle Bunchen is like saying right now about the whole situation. You know, I don't care. I don't like Giselle. I think she's whiny. <laughs> Is she? <laughs> after 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 they lost the Patriots lost to the Giants a few years ago, she's like, "Well, Tom can't throw and catch the ball." It's like, babe, your job is to walk up and down a runway looking pretty. Like, you know, it doesn't exactly take three brain cells to do that. So just stick to what you do and let Tom stick to what he does. Because <laughs> oh, I would be Love offended it. if I was on the Patriots and then we lost. You know, it's it's time, whatever. Anything else going on in the world of uh, celebrities? Oh yeah, uh, guess who just turned eighteen? Some moron I don't care about, right? Don't freak out. Kylie Jenner from the Jenner Kardashian clan. You know, I saw someone post a, a gif today, and I will not say gif, it's gif, of uh, it was on this very topic, and it's Tommy Lee Jones from uh, The Fugitive, where Harrison Ford's like, I didn't kill my wife, and he's just like, I don't care, <laughs> and it's how much I feel with this whole thing, you know, and she's, I mean, she'll be naked before you know it. Tyga or Tiga, whatever the hell's name is. He gave, what, she bought him like a $300,000 car yeah, or something? Yeah, it's, pretty, it's ridiculous. You know what? Someone else posted a picture of her from just a few years ago mm. to a picture of her now. Definitely lots of plastic surgery. Like, what kind of mom is Chris Jenner? She's a psychopath. Yeah, I mean, her lips are so injected. Those, she looks nothing the same. I mean, those scary. boobs feel yeah. like are fake. It's, 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 you know, the, the Kardashians have the best looks that money can buy. And, you know, not, not to, God forbid, Kylie get her day in the sun. Big old butted uh, Kim Kardashian just posted some naked picture of her pregnant. I know, I saw that. I'm just like, why like, are you doing that? I'm like, they are such, like, they're just whores. Like, not whores in the sense of they're having lots of sex, or maybe they are. They're like whores in the fact that they whore themselves out. Like, they will do anything. How, name a normal person who's going to take a na picture of themselves naked while pregnant and just post it out there for everybody to see. Multiple times. You know, it's a calm down. Yeah. Like, we, we've seen it all before. It's, I don't, I don't get it. I, I'm, I'm speechless. That's very rarely the case. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I know you're totally over it as much of the world is, but we still have to report on it because it is celebrity. Yeah. Some people actually do still care. Have you been watching I Am Kate? No, but I did read how after the first episode, their viewership just dropped insanely. That makes you happy, doesn't it? It does. I, I don't care about anybody who is a Kardashian or a Jenner. Except for maybe poor dead Robert Kardashian. God, imagine if he was alive seeing all this stuff oh, happen. Oh man, he he's probably rolling in his grave. But he was he was OJ's lawyer, so you know he's not doing much better, I guess. <laughs> all right, you got anything else to throw out there? Uh, I don't. But do you? I don't. But I've been you know I haven't been following up on my TMZ since I moved. They've been backing up on my DVR, so I gotta figure. You out what's love going your on. TMZ. I do a boom, boom today on TMZ. I, whenever I hear that, I get so happy. So I got to watch some of those and figure out what, you know, it's all going to be old news by the time I actually get around to watching it. Yeah. Um, you remember that story that I reported on a couple months ago? Um, you know, Gossip Girl's Kelly Rutherford? Yeah, yeah. I, I watched Gossip Girl, XOXO, Gossip Girl. You know, the, one of the main characters, Kelly Rutherford? Yeah, it was, her, it was the mom. It was Serena Vanderwoodson's mom. You know she's going through a custody battle with her. Yeah, she just got screwed today. She got screwed, and this is really big news because it really makes you question why a U.S. citizen who had two children in the U.S. to Their kids are U.S. citizens. U.S. citizens are, they're forcing her children to go and live in Monaco. Not even France. Because, yeah, because her ex-husband... Do we know why he was kicked out of the U.S.? I, I don't even. They always gloss over that why he, he's no he's no longer allowed in the country. I have no idea. But why would you have? I mean, clearly it's something negative, right? He's not allowed in the U.S. because it's be. not something positive. Or they let him. <laughs> we in. let everybody in this country. I mean, he can't get in here. He can't get in. But why would the U.S. judge force her children who are U.S. citizens to go 
pretty much her children are in exile essentially okay i think the courts are working together because they were supposed to after time go back to the father and she's like i'm never going to see them again and here's the kicker because she wasn't going to let them go back to monaco she may lose even more rights to seeing them isn't that nuts well it just shows you like her it just supports her case even more though because why would they why are they even there it's very bizarre yeah, it's it's. I've, I've actually felt really bad for her when they were interviewing her on the way out. All she could say is like, "I have no words," and just started crying. I was like, oh, "I actually feel bad for this person." And we'll have uh, more for you on this. Yeah, we're gonna figure out who the hell this guy is to begin with. He seems like a heiress to some. An heiress. He's a man. He's not an heiress. What, what is He'd be it an, called? Heir. an heir to some? An heir. He's an heir to some. <laughs> Sorry. Ex who the hell lives in freaking Monaco? Like. What are you just crapping all over people who live in Monaco now? You have to be very wealthy to just be hanging out in Monaco, first of all. Somebody, some poor family is listening to this podcast right now in Monaco and be like, "What do we ever do to bring me your torch feet to crap all over?" Exactly, us? some poor family because they're not going to be rich if they're they're either poor or rich. They're not. I don't even know what's happening right now. Whatevs. I think we've said it all. And we've said enough. We won't go through the same rigmarole that we did at the beginning of the episode because you've already heard it once and we're not, we're not going to make you sit through that one more time. So I think we'll just end it and say, just remember, you may have come here as a stranger, but you're leaving as a friend. We'll see you next time on Bring Me Your Torch. Yeah, yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs>